Hey everyone, welcome to Singularity Beast 2 build log part 4. Now this part of the build log is going to continue straight on from where part 3 finished. So if you remember at the end of part 3 I had all the panels out of the case including the motherboard tray. I'd installed all the quad radiators with the fans and also the dual pump top. And in particular I had removed the front, the accessory that I purchased for the 5.25 inch bays for installing a 360 millimeter radiator. So, yeah, I, you can see that's missing from the front of the case there on the 5.25 inch bay side. So I'm going to move straight on now to installing the radiator and fans onto that panel. So I just thought I'd give you a look at the, a closer look at the accessory before I install the radiator onto it and the fans into it because you can see that screw just there there's three of them down the side and what they allow you to do is open it up, pull it apart so that you can install the fans between the two panels and then the radiator onto the onto the back of it but you'll see what I mean once I've installed everything and there's the radiator that I'm installing a black ISSR 1360mm. Alright, I've got the radiator mounted and also the fans and I'm really lucky that I had all these extra bolts and screws sitting around for mounting radiators. You know I've got M3s and M4s for all the different types of radiators and different configurations. You know sometimes you want to mount your fans on the case side or on the inside you know there's a lot of different ways that you can mount a radiator and fans. You might want to do push pull configurations. So I knew that Black Ice only sends screws that are long enough to go through the fans and into the radiator. So basically, they only send screws that bolt the fans onto the radiator. They do not send screws that mounts the radiator to the case. So if you're going with Black Ice radiators, you pretty much always have to buy extra screws and or bolts. So luckily I had all these Allen key head bolts sitting around and I've just mounted the fans on the inside of the panel and the radiator on the outside. Well actually the radiator will be on the inside of the case and then this ventilated panel just slides on the outside here so I'm just going to put all this together now. I mean everything's bolted together already but I've just got to put the cover on and then I'm going to mount it all back into the case. Okay after going to all that trouble mounting the radiator and the fans I figured out that they don't fit and I mean the radiators and the, the radiator and the fans fit fine on the accessory. The accessory is awesome but what I didn't take into consideration, what I should have seen is the small distance between here and this radiator because that there is just not enough to fit a 60 millimeter radiator and you know the way I had it mounted is the radiator on the back here and the fans on the inside of this accessory. I mean you could there's a couple of ways you could use this accessory. If you had a radiator that could mount on the inside of here, which would be anything up to about 40 millimeters would fit inside here, then you could put the fans on the back here. You could also spin this radiator around and put the fittings on the other end, which would give you a bit more room and yeah, probably just enough room. But you know, then I'd need to pack the radiator up to get it above these bolts here, or I'd need to cut these bolts off, or I'd need to like not run the casters at all and run the the rubber case feet, you know, then it would fit either that or I could move it up two spots up uh, up into here, but then I'd only have two 5.25 inch bays and there'd be two down the bottom. I could put this quad radiator on the other side, which that would be the best option for me and that is what I intended to do originally. When I was looking at the pictures of this case I thought, 
Okay, well, I want a 360mm radiator on the front there, but if I do that, I can't fit the quad because there's not going to be enough room here. That is something that I had actually already figured out, but, you know, take with all the other things that I have to take into account, I'd, you know, it had slipped my mind, so, because I've changed the old, the whole configuration and the tubing around from what I had originally planned when I was, yeah, when I was looking at the pictures of this case and buying it. Okay, I've got my entire Bits Power fittings collection out here. Now this is a collection that I've, yeah, I've been collecting these over the past like three years, so I didn't buy them all in one hit for this build. This is my, yeah, this is my entire collection for client builds, etc. So there's all types of fittings here, everything in the Bits Power fittings range. I won't go through them all, but I'm going to start now putting the fittings on the radiators and, you know, everywhere where they need to be. Okay, it's time to have a close look at the CPU that I'm using, the Intel Core i7-3930K. So there's a few reasons why I chose this instead of the 3960X. I can still get an unlocked multiplier using the 3930K because that's all I'm after. The only reason on my previous build that I went out and spent a fortune on the 980X when it first came out was for the unlocked multiplier. And you know if, if the 3930 hadn't have had an unlocked multiplier then yeah I would have spent the extra $800 and gone for the 3960X because I need the unlocked multiplier for what I want to do and that is major overclocking. So this CPU has socket LGA2011. It's manufactured using the 32 nanometer process, so it has 32 nanometer transistors. It runs at 3.2 gigahertz and turbos to 3.8. It has 64 kilobytes of, of L1 cache times 6, 256 kilobytes of L2 cache times 6, and it has 12 meg of L3 cache, so it's a 6 core processor and it has a TDP of 130 watts. Okay, just a look at the top of the CPU. From what I've seen and heard, these things overclock really well and I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into that. I just hope that the silicon lottery has treated me well this time around. Now looking underneath the CPU it really is a massive CPU and as you can see it's rectangular it's a fair bit bigger than socket 1366 and certainly bigger than socket 1155 I would do a size comparison but I really need to get on with this build I'll have a lot of benchmark results temperature results I'll be doing a lot of testing once I finish building this system don't worry about that and there'll be a lot of yeah, videos surrounding performance and overclocking also. So the CPU is in and I am now mounting, well I'm now putting on the socket 2011 mounts for the EK Supreme HF. So it's a lot easier than socket 1366 or 1155 or any of the previous sockets for that matter. Well, you know, mounting the EK Supreme HF that is. Because you used to have to use a backplate, you know, install the backplate and then push the all the mounting hardware through the holes, you know, it was a real pain, but now all you have to do is use the existing backplate. Okay, the water block is installed and I'll just now give you a close look at the water block that I'm using. So it's the EK Supreme HF Nickel Plexi. So it's got a transparent top and nickel plated copper block underneath. I'll just give you a quick look at what comes with the water block. So you get all the mounting hardware, Allen key. You get a couple of back plates, one for AMD, one for Intel. And instructions, which are down there. Oh, and you also get Arctic Silver. No, Arctic MX4, which is exactly what I use for everything. So now for a close look at the water block. 
EK recently changed their mounting system to this new easy mount system which looks really nice and I just cannot believe how easy it is to install one of these water blocks with socket 2011 so it's a really nice looking block it looks great once there's some coolant flowing through it and there's so many different versions available it's also the highest or one of the highest performing water blocks on the planet so yeah it's an excellent option because EK make water blocks for almost everything so you can match up your Water, all the water blocks in your system and there's also so many options like there's another one there that's a full nickel block just a close look at the memory that I'm using so this is temporary memory as I mentioned I'll just be using this until I can get my hands on a nice kit of Corsair Dominator high frequency with the lowest timings possible so somewhere around 2000 megahertz I won't really be able to do any major overclocking until then because this is only 1600 megahertz memory so you get a G-Skill sticker with it yeah I won't be able to go for any performance records it certainly is a nice kit of memory there's no doubt about that and it's going to match up with the motherboard nicely black PCBs just to look at the specifications there yeah, and I really like these heat sinks as well. Well, I'm pretty stoked with the way that looks. Alright, I'll put this in the system and then I'll give you another look. Okay, I've now got the motherboard in the system and all the fittings are on and I've started tubing up. I've also got all of the memory in the motherboard. I forgot to put the other two sticks in before, just didn't even think about it but they're in there now and yeah as I said all the fittings are on so they're on all the radiators pumps reservoir and water block because this is the only water block in the system so far god that ram looks awesome in this system I'm really happy with it even though it's temporary I'm absolutely stoked with how that looks so yeah, I haven't put many tubes in yet. There's just that tube there from the pumps to the first radiator. And the reservoir is in place. And I actually wanted to have a tube coming like through here and back to the top of the reservoir. And then what you do is you have the bottom of the reservoir, well, the side of the reservoir that has the three openings you know up here that way you can fill it and have a tube coming to it but what I've gone and done is got the the bottom well I've got the same top and bottom on this reservoir so it's just got one central opening on either side because I got this one off another reservoir because how they come is with yeah one opening on one side three on the other so I've gone and stole this off another reservoir and it's on a extension bits power extension fitting I think it's a 20 millimeter extension fitting and also another uh, dual G1 quarter inch fitting with you know two male fittings on it two male ends and yeah that's stiff enough I've done all the the bolts up holding the pumps down and it's definitely stiff enough to hold the the reservoir in place you know that's really not going to go anywhere unless I move the system and I certainly don't plan on doing that except to my desk you know once it goes to my desk that'll be it and it'll go to my desk empty and then I'll fill it up because when it's full it's obviously going to have more pressure on it and then whenever I if I ever do transport it I can just you know these pumps tilt I don't want to do it too much but I guess they won't tilt now that the the tubing is in place but yeah all I have to, to do to tilt them is undo this tube here and I can actually tilt the reservoir back and sit it against this just here to you know and then it stays in place so to install those pumps I didn't even think about it I'm actually probably going to have to undo this tube here so that I can tilt the 
the dual pump top back and screw the pumps on or maybe I can screw them in there if I can fit my hand around there and you know fit the pumps so I've got a quick disconnect here because so that I can undo it to remove the motherboard tray if I want to and yeah I've decided to use feather tubing instead of Tigon tubing because I'm not happy with that coolant you know I was going to go with the Tigon tubing and the Fluid XP coolant but it's just too pink okay so I'm just testing this coolant because I've been really concerned about its color you know being way too pink instead of red and so I thought I'd put it under a UV light to see if it improved at all and also put it in the reservoir to see if it was just the bottle that made it look like that but I'm really not liking its UV effects I mean it is slightly better than it looks on the camera but it's nowhere near what I was expecting you know or what I want so yep I won't be using this coolant it's too pink when not under a UV light and doesn't have enough of a UV reactive effect so I'll just turn the light on and it doesn't really pick it up and the, the camera doesn't really pick it up but it is very very pink so so I've gone back to my default configuration you know I want to get this system up and running I mean if I go start ordering coolant again now and more tubing it's going to be another two weeks before I get this thing up and running because I pretty much can't get what I want from anywhere within Australia and I'm, there's no way I'm waiting another two weeks so I, I love my you know I love feather tubing and coolant I've been using it for years and I'm, I've always been happy with it and it has an excellent UV effect which is what I'm going for in this build you know I often get people saying oh what tubing and coolant are you using you know it looks great so I'm just going to stick with it and I'm sure once I've got all those UV lights in that it'll just look you know just how I wanted it probably if I had have gone the other way I wouldn't have been able to get the UV effect I wanted so I've got a lot of stuff laying around here I've got all the everything out here now that's going to be going into the system all laid out ready to go so unfortunately there just has to be a long tube somewhere in the system I mean unless I'm going to put the reservoir and the pumps up this end and spin that other radiator around which there's no way I want to do that because you know where am I going to put the, I can't I can't put the reservoir and the pumps on this end on the other side I can't put it on this side either so there has to be a long tube the other option would be to use cross flow radiators with fitting you know one fitting on one end one fitting on the other but there's no high performance cross flow radiators because they don't do enough passes so the reason why this is so long is because I'm going to mount it up there like that right out of the way of the power supplies cables you know all the wiring so yeah that's where it's going to go completely out of the way of everything else that's going in here also the hard drive bays need to fit in there so I had to make it a bit longer to fit all of that in I just had no choice and then I've got a quick disconnect there I can undo that and pull the tubing out here and then what you do is connect the other end of a quick disconnect up to it and you can drain the entire system just like that out the back of the system it's the lowest point I've designed it so that it's the lowest point I mean the radiator on the other side is a bit lower but yeah it works out perfectly and you can see in there how I've tubed up between this radiator in the roof and the radiator in the roof on the other side so that's about it okay that sums up part four of the build log in part five I'm going to be covering some of the hardware which I haven't given you a close look at yet I'm also going to be getting the build up to the point where I can transition between the Singularity Beast and Singularity Beast 2 so basically it's just wiring or well, mostly wiring that I need to focus on now so thanks for watching please subscribe like and favorite if you want to see more thanks everyone